this is Colin Champ in my second of, again, hopefully millions of my video series. This is episode number two last week. I hope you checked in. If not, check it out. It was a, on a topic near and dear to my heart. That is fasting and breast cancer. We discussed the study uh, on the effect of fasting on breast cancer recurrence. This week, we're going to segue into another topic near and dear to my heart, and that is the ketogenic diet. Uh, this is a very high fat, very low carbohydrate, and pretty low protein um, diet that many think may help to prevent cancer, synergize with cancer treatment, or even treat cancer in itself. We do not have a lot of data in humans to support any of those claims. There is preclinical data in mice and some other animal studies, and the study this week is looking at that data. So specifically, this is a study by a good buddy of mine, Rainer Clement. It was published in PLOS1 or PLOS1, however you want to... Uh, however you want to pronounce it. This is a meta-analysis of all the preclinical studies in animals to come up with some conclusions to hypothesize what this diet may do in humans. It's called the anti-tumor effects of a ketogenic diet, excuse me, of ketogenic diets in mice, a meta-analysis. Uh, if you look this up, it is open access. Anyone can get this on the internet. Uh, yes, I'm biased. I think it's a great study. I'm also part of the study but this is my video series, so I can present any study I want. So deal with it. Um, so starting out the study, again, a big meta-analysis. So this means we went through every study that we hope exists. In total, there were 72 articles on the ketogenic diet. There were 23 total studies, and 12 of these studies met our inclusion criteria. And I'm not gonna go into too many details of the study. You can look those up if you want. Um, only the, uh, the pertinent points 192 mice in total were treated with a ketogenic diet. 180 mice were fed a standard mouse diet. And looking at looking through the studies, at the findings, not surprising, the ketogenic diet mice were producing ketones, 1.6 millimolar. The standard diet mice were also producing ketones, not a lot, 0.3 millimolar. millimolar. So that was uh, subnutritional ketosis. Uh, one of the studies mice were considered ketogenic, but they did not make ketones. So that was another interesting point. And in the ketogenic diet, glucose tended to be lower, seven millimolar versus 8.5 millimolar, but there was no statistically significant difference. And that's an important point. Initially, we thought a ketogenic diet may lower blood glucose. Dr. Seafried and others championed that notion. It seemed logical enough. Unfortunately, in humans, it doesn't seem to be happening. Uh, Ulrike Kammerer, who is the senior author of this paper, has commented on this in her papers and presentations many times. She's probably seen the most patients in the world, correct me if I'm wrong, on a ketogenic diet, and she has extensively commented on the fact that it does not significantly decrease most people's blood glucose. It does mine. I know some of my friends it does. It does not do it to everyone. So we looked through all these studies, and Dr. Clement did basically all the stats, and these stats will make your head explode. So do not read them as they may harm your health. Uh, but for those of you that really want to dig in, it is a crazy endeavor looking at these stats and Rainer did an amazing job. What he showed that a mean survival time ratio was 0.85 and a hazard ratio was 0.55. So I'm not going to go too far into detail what that means, but it means a ketogenic diet was beneficial. So it did improve mice that were on it. Um, there was different ways in which it improved mice. And, and that's what we try to kind of pick through. So first thing we look at is um, these forest plots and they're indicating prolonged mean survival time. Obviously we want to improve survival time with any treatment we do and we want to reduce the rate of dying. So it looked at both of these uh, and I will post these on here. I'm not the best with, uh, with the software, but nonetheless, basically when you look at these forest plots, it's all the studies uh, that are pertinent it lists them one by one and goes downward. Anything to the left of one means good, it's beneficial. Anything to the right of one means it's actually harmful. And then at the bottom, there's a summary and it's basically, it's more than an average, but it's like an average of all the studies. So looking at the forest plot uh, for mean survival time ratio, uh, the majority of studies showed an improvement. Some showed no improvement. Some hedged towards actually being harmful, but they were not statistically significant. Overall, it did show a improvement in mean survival time. So ketogenic diet was beneficial. Uh, next, if we look for the hazard ratio, again, we want that hazard ratio less than one, and it was. It was, it was 
quite below one. So it was another uh, a force plot here showing that a ketogenic diet was beneficial in that regard. So we picked through the data, we made our comments, our conclusions, and overall we found that the ketogenic diet was less effective when it was started late. Or in other words, if the mice were given a cancer, injected with a cancer, implanted with a cancer, it was allowed to grow and the ketogenic diet was started later, it was less effective. Uh, there was a protective role in the ketogenic diet in the early stages of tumor genesis. So again, it's much less effective when the tumor growth has already been initiated, consistent with results from one of the largest rodent studies on the ketogenic diet. This was a study where they used 303 rats. We did not include it in this because of some issues. They used 303 rats and it showed that it slowed cancer growth before the cancer was there. Uh, our result showed, and this is a direct comment, at best a weak effect of ketogenic diets as a sole therapy against either manifested tumors in general and or brain tumors in particular. Ketogenic diet as a monotherapy seemed uh, ineffective in these mice. It did synergize with radiation therapy in a couple studies to show quite profound responses. Dr. Sheck's data, for instance, was one of those. So there's a couple limitations of this study. One of the limitations is the heterogeneity of the data. So in other words, the data was all over the place, okay? Some studies were looking at one thing, other studies were looking at other things. It was in different tumor sites. So that's an issue. The other issue with the study is a big one. And again, we don't have human data, but one thing we need to keep in mind is that all these studies were in animals. So as you can see here, this is Mushu, she's an animal. Just kidding, you're more than an animal, you're my best friend. And now she's mad at me. And the key thing to remember here is while animal data is certainly important, it does not always correlate with human data. So for instance, just because we can even cure cancer in an animal doesn't mean we can do it in humans. We have to test that with further studies and we're hoping that those will happen. Um, another thing here is that if the timing of the ketogenic diet is of major importance, this would imply that fasting and ketogenic diets are strongest as a preventative strategy, at least in animals, hopefully in humans, but only as a supporting role during cancer treatment. So again, as a supporting role during cancer treatment. This is consistent again with current available human data that are looking at uh, the, the same type of treatment. Again, further studies in humans are needed. So there's a couple things here. I'm going to look at my notes so I don't forget this or get it wrong, but for patients out there, for cancer patients, we don't know if a ketogenic diet helps or hurts in humans. That's first off. Second off, we don't know if you need to be in full ketosis. Nobody knows that. Third off, we don't know if you can simply eat ketone producing foods like MCT oil or coconut oil. We hope it will help, but we have to test this in a trial. So do not stress if you are unable to get into ketosis, if you don't want to get into ketosis, if you think it's stupid to get in ketosis, because we don't know if it helps or not. We are hoping it does, but we do not know. And along those lines, we don't know how much in ketosis, if it does help, we don't know how much in ketosis you need to be. Can it simply be drinking MCT oil or does it need to be all out full ketosis? Again, we don't know. If you want to do it, more power to you. Please be safe, see a dietitian, make sure you're uh, physicians on board or at least has a colleague that's on board but if you cannot do it if you're not producing big ketones do not stress out because that will have its own issues okay so let's get that straight secondly my or excuse me finally if a ketogenic diet can in fact help to prevent cancer that is huge news okay we don't know if it's going to synergize with treatment or not we don't even know if it can prevent it but if the data is showing that that's what it can do Again, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, et cetera. This is good news all around. So at this point, I'm gonna hold my breath for studies because they're gonna happen. Uh, I have a study right now that's hopefully gonna be open soon, testing some of these same questions. Uh, a lot of studies are out there. Other studies are out there as well. Dr. Clement has a study, Dr. Sheck has a study. Uh, there's a lot of other studies. So this question is gonna be answered. So I will hold my breath till that uh, comes through. But for those of you out there that are patients that are trying to do this and don't feel like you can, again, don't stress over it. We don't have all the answers yet, okay? So everyone, I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, the, again, this study is, I'll put in the show notes, it's available online and it's free and anyone can access it. 
Uh, again, I'm a firm believer in the power of food and fighting cancer and hopefully synergizing with cancer treatments. I think the ketogenic diet may be one of those uh, weapons against cancer. Again, we just don't know, but I'm really hoping it will be. Uh, more studies to come for sure, and hopefully I'll be presenting those studies on this show in the future. Uh, everyone have a good week. Uh, again, please check me out at colinchamp.com. Send me any messages, send me any studies you want to discuss, and uh, everyone stay healthy out there. Thanks for listening.